Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard here and today we're going to talk a little bit about the new infantry data sheets that have been leaked and why they're a little bit disappointing. Now don't worry if you've not seen any leaks and you're thinking what the heck are you going on about Mordian Glory? I'm going to have a link down in the description below and that will take you to a Google Drive document with all of the leaked data sheets that I've been able to get my hands on and also there will be a link at the end of this episode to a video where I go through all the leaks data sheets as well so don't worry you'll be able to get your hands on that information but today guys we're going to be taking a look at all of the new infantry data sheets now firstly there are four which is pretty cool we've got your standard infantry squad you've got Cadian shock troops you've got Katachan jungle fighters and you've got death Corps of krieg now there are still data sheets for scions and kazakin and stuff like that but what we're looking at today is your standard troop choices your men of the line your infantry now when i first heard that these different units were getting their own unique data sheets i was really excited and i couldn't wait to see what games workshop was going to do to make each one of these units feel unique and how would they play on the tabletop unfortunately it seems like they're all pretty similar and there's been quite a few missed opportunities to make these different types of unit really stand out on the battlefield and like i said there's been lots of missed opportunities and the first one is a major one that all of the different units be it a regular infantry squad catch hands death core cadence they've all got the exact same stat line they've all got the same standard guardsman stat line that we've been used to for 20 30 years at this point okay You've got your weapon skill four plus your ballistic skill four plus your strength three your toughness three blah 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 there's no extra attacks or strength for katachan there's no extra weapon skill or attacks for anything like death core creek they've all got the same basic stat line and i kind of understand why games workshop's done that they've gone look at the end of the day a man is just a man and the data sheet abilities are where we want to differentiate our units. I mean, you've got all these different kinds of intercessor and where they change is like equipment and with data sheet abilities. I get that, but I really think there were some great opportunities to be had to have a little nod, a little bit of a reference to some of the abilities that these and stats that these units have had in the past. In fact, the only thing that differentiates these squads is essentially the equipment that they can take. Some of them have some minor data sheet abilities as well, but they are very minor. And I just don't think that there's, they bring enough flavor to differentiate between the different squads. I really think that the stat line would have been a good opportunity to make these different squads stand apart from each other. But like I said, at the moment, it's basically just the different equipment that they can take. So, for example, if you look at the Catachans, they have exactly the same stat line. And they really, they should have had some kind of inbuilt extra strength. I mean, I understand that Games Workshop might have been like, well, if we give them a permanent strength four and then someone takes the brutal strength regimental doctrine, you're then looking at strength five Catachans. I totally get that. But maybe they could have had a data ability that just says... These guys are strength four and they can't benefit from any other bonuses to strength. Fine. Okay. Totally get it. You don't want strength five guards running around. Or maybe Games Workshop could have given them an extra attack. And then if you wanted to relive the glory days of having strength four Catachans punching tanks to death, you could have taken brutal strength. I mean, any Catachan player worth his salt is going to be taking brutal strength anyway for that plus one strength in combat. So it would have been really cool to see Catachans with like an extra strength by a brutal strength and maybe having an extra attack because at the end of the day, you know, most Catachan jungle fighters are well known for their blades and it's, any Catachan jungle fighter is going to have an extra knife tucked away here, there and everywhere. You can never have too many knives. That's like an old Catachan saying. It would have been really cool to have this ability where it's like you get your extra attacks and if you really want to get the... Uh, the Catachan extra strength back, make sure you're taking brutal strength. That would have been really, really cool. It also would have kind of helped differentiate them from things like Death Corps and your other infantry units because there's no way of getting extra attacks in the Guard Codex as far as I can see. Priests don't do it anymore. So that would have definitely stood them apart from the other regiments. These guys get lots of attacks, but they're not hitting that well. It also would have given them a role within the Guard as some sort of light berserker like infantry berserkers don't tend to have great skill but they have lots of attacks and that could have been something that katachans could have fulfilled they're not going to be able to take on core berserkers or anything like that don't i'm not being stupid what i'm saying is when it comes to 
these infantry, these Catachans, taking on other guardsmen-like infantry of other factions like Elder Guardians, Tal Firewars, it would have definitely set them apart. You could imagine a unit of, of Catachans going into like a unit of Tal Firewars. Both sides have got pretty similar stats, but suddenly the Catachans have got double the attacks. That makes them stand out. That makes them differentiate. You can tell the Tau players are going to go, whoa, two attacks by Guardsmen? That's cool. So you see what I mean? Missed opportunity to make these guys stand out and to give them a unique battlefield role of some sort of light infantry bully berserker style unit. Another thing they could have done with Catachans is given them some kind of ambush ability. Because back in the day when you had your second and third edition expansion codexes, Catachans actually had their own separate codex. I mean, those Black Templar people were going on about for ages. Oh, we had our own codex. We should have our own codex back. Catachans have been waiting for their codex for longer, okay? So it would have been cool to have a nod to the old Catachan codex where they could put things in ambush. They could mark things down on maps and reveal them at ra random points and spring ambushes on their enemy. It was really, really cool. Now, I'm not saying it's anything like that because it's open to abuse in a competitive kind of way, but just having some kind of ambush ability where it's like, if these guys are in cover and they haven't shot yet, then you can't target them. But the moment they shoot, the first time they shoot in the game, that's it. You, you can target them. The ambush has been sprung. That would have been cool to have. Or maybe you could have had some sort of forward deploy infiltration style thing. I mean, there are some units out there which can forward deploy. Supposedly Sentinels are going to be able to do it. Supposedly Rattlings are going to be able to have a really nice forward deploy. Wouldn't it have been cool to have the ability for cash chance to forward deploy it's an ability which is standard amongst many factions in 40k now it's not some special quirky mechanic you're gonna have to come up with that will need 10 faqs and could be abused by someone no it's just standard ability the standard thing that's in 40k at the moment and you just give it to the cat chance because cat chance for deploying is not really a big deal they've just got las guns you know what i mean and they're not going to be able to out combat a lot of people so would have been nice for them to have that ability. Like I said, Kachans, have, there's so many missed opportunities with them. I think the most disappointing thing about the Kachans, though, is that their weapon options are so limited. They can literally take two flamers. That's it. I mean, that's just mad. I mean, there are Katachan heavy weapons available for sale right now. Katachan command squads, which come with melter guns and plasmas, they're available. Okay, like, so it's crazy that... They haven't given them the ability to take anything other than just like flamers. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I mean, what it feels like to me, is, I mean, Catrons do have that ability, you know, they get exploding sixes in combat. That's what they're getting. But it's just 12 attacks, exploding sixes, you might get two extra attacks. It's nothing. You know what I mean? It's just not enough. Um, what it feels like to me is that GW had this policy of if we make a kit for it, we're going to have to make rules for it. And they really just phoned it in. They were like, Catrons, standard guardsman data sheet. Uh, oh, we can only get flames in the kit. Well, I guess they're going to take flamers now. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter that, you know, spacemen captains can have whatever they want. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, Catachans can only have flamers. Oh, uh, yeah, give them tack on a random little combat ability that basically is never going to do anything. Boom, done. I genuinely can't see any reason why you'd run Catachans over a regular infantry. I can't see it. I can't see it. Let me know down in the comments section if you've come up with some crazy Catachan loophole or something. But to be honest, as far as I can tell, even Catachan players. Unless you're the most die-hard catch jam player out there, you're probably just going to defer back to your regular infantry squads. Moving on, we've then got the Death Corps of Krieg. Now, Death Corps are actually pretty good, and I like the new rules they've given to them, but I still feel like there were some missed opportunities. So, for example, it would have been great to see them have weapon skill 3+. plus. Wouldn't that have been cool where your catch jams get extra attacks, but your Death Corps of Krieg just get better weapon skill attacks that's how it used to be back in the days of forge world back when death core krieg had a forge world codex they had weapon skill three plus it would have been nice to give them that nod would that have made a difference in terms of them becoming some sort of combat powerhouse of course not could you have combined that with things like um fixed bayonets so that they could get hit on twos yeah maybe you could but at the end of the day they're only gonna have one attack each they're only gonna have strength three so I really would have liked to have seen Death Court with a with a three plus uh, to hit. If and if they were concerned about that, be hit them hitting on twos, maybe the extra attack. But I would rather the extra attack went to catch chance. But it would have been great to see the Death Court having their weapon skill three plus back. Likewise, it would have been cool to see them getting some kind of charging bonus, even if it was just plus one to charge. 
At the end of the day, the Deathclaw Creek are really famous for their World War I style bayonet and shovel charges. That's what it's all about. Fixed bayonets, charge out across no man's land, give it to the enemy, get up close and personal with them. It would have been cool to see them getting some kind of plus one to charge ability. That would have been nice. Because at the end of the day, not a competitive ability. You're still really not wanting to throw your Deathclaw Krieg into combat. But it's a little nod. It's a little bit of actual flavor. And so I just think that would have been a really cool thing to do. So again, it's another missed opportunity. I do like the fact that they have mini transhuman. Um, but I think that... I don't I don't see Death Court as being any more durable than a regular guardsman. I just kind of see them as being braver. So for me, as much as much as I like the mini transhuman ability where they can only be wounded on a three or better, that doesn't make as much sense to me. It would have been cooler to have them as just fearless. Just have them as fearless. Have them, they can only take what you know, when they take a morale test, they only ever take one. That's it. You now that one guy that runs away is just helping with the wounded. That's what he's doing. You know, something like that. Um, yeah, having the mini transhuman is a cool ability, but it doesn't really feel doesn't feel right to me. A guard, you know, for a guardsman to be able to shrug off wounds like that, not not a big fan. It would have been cool to see them getting some kind of uh, some kind of leadership ability. But like I said, overall, I do like the death calls, and I think out of all of the regiments, they got the most flavorful rules. Okay, so I do like that. Uh, I would have just gone in a slightly different direction with it. Uh, however, moving on to the Cadians, these guys got, I think, the best of the rules and the best of the abilities. And I think that in itself is kind of boring. Now, I know what some people are going to say. Oh, Mordian, GW can't do right for wrong for you. They do right in one area, you criticize them. They do wrong in another area, you criticize them. What are they meant to do? It's like, okay, yeah, I get that. But hear me out. Cadians have kind of had the Matt Ward ultramarine bullshit treatment for a long time now. Okay, and at the end of the day... There were many other regiments out there. It would be, you know, and GW corrected their mistake with Ultramarines and started making the other, you know, the other Space Wing chapters unique and interesting and equal again. And all the spiritual liege stuff. But they still seem to have this thing with Cadian. It's like, Cadians must be the best. Cadians must be at the front. I'm sorry, but Cadia fell. All right? And I know a lot of Cadian people out there are going to be really upset when I say this, but Cadia fell. Okay. So it doesn't really make sense that Cadians are still leading the charge and all that kind of stuff. I know there's colonies and there's loads of arguments you can make for it. I get it. There's loads of extended fluff. I get it. But at the end of the day, Cadia fell. And that was a perfect opportunity for GW to start, you know, making all the regs look a bit equal or bringing forward a new poster boy. So it's kind of annoying that Cadians are still getting all the best stuff. And I'm only annoyed about that from a long beard. You know, you can say I'm just being a grumpy old man out that. I totally accept that. Put that down in the comment section. I won't disagree with you in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying it would have been nice if the Cadians didn't have the obviously best data sheet again. Because they pointed, they pointed at 65 points, which is the same as the standard infantry squad. It's 15 points cheaper than a death core of Krieg infantry squad, and it's 5 points cheaper than a Katachan one. It's just bonkers. Okay. Uh, they can take two special weapons, which is something that most guard players are going to really want to take advantage of. I mean, me personally, I'm planning on running my infantry as Cajun Shock Troops because I would rather have more mobile infantry than my static ones and my heavy weapons because I'm always moving my heavy weapons around anyway. I'm always moving them around. So why would I, Why you know, I'm always moving my infantry squads around. So why would I just take a data sheet that lets me get two specials and I don't have to worry about one of my weapons hitting a minus one. I can just move around and fire my double plasma guns off. having a great time. So having the ability to take two specials is is just straight up a buff. It's not even a trade. It's just straight up a buff. Okay. And then having the ability for you to get exploding sixes with your last gun shots. It's just great. It's just great. It just means that your special weapons are cooking on gas. It means that your last guns are just do are doing well as well. It's just overall, they've just obviously got the best, uh, the best abilities and they've also got the best equipment. And I just wish that wasn't just Cadians getting it again. Do you know what I mean? Another missed opportunity. Could have been someone else. Could have been another regiment. Could have been a new regiment. Would have been cool. Just a couple of other things that I would have liked to have seen with the infantry is for the standard infantry squad to have something that also differentiates it. I mean, if you look at the other units, the Catachans, Death Call, the Cadians, they're all running around with many special weapons. Great. But the infantry squad is the only one that can take a heavy weapon, which is kind of cool. That differentiates it. But it would have been nice 
to have an ability that kind of leans into that obvious sort of defensive role that these guys are meant to have. I mean, they're meant to be dug in with the heavy weapons, firing away, holding line, holding the objectives. It would have been nice to have something that represented that. Maybe they were a little bit braver around objectives. Maybe they could be dug in a little bit better. Maybe an extra pip of, of armor or something like that. Or maybe, you know, it would have been nice to have something on your standard infantry squad's uh, abilities that would have made them really the quintessential uh, defensive infantry. It would have been cool to see, like, infantry squads dug in actually be a little bit of a pain for your opponents to dig out. I'm not asking them to be, you know, hard as nails, dug in, sandbags, rock creek bunkers or anything. I'm not asking for that. It would have been cool if your opponent's like, okay, that's an infantry squad. It's got a heavy weapon. I'm going to need more than just some bolt rifles to dig those guys out. I'm going to need a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit of a spice to dig those infantry out. Not too much, but something they actually have to consider. They actually have to make a decision rather than just throwing some spare firepower at you. Another thing I would say is that overall, um, as much as I love the new data sheets, the biggest disappointment is the fact that we're losing three data sheets. We may have gained three. We've gained Catachans, we've gained Death Corps, we've gained Cadians, but we've lost special weapon squads. We've lost veterans. We've lost conscripts. And I am not personally sold on if that was a worthwhile trade. I'm on the fence about that. Because at the end of the day, I think losing conscripts is going to lose a huge amount of flavor from the Guard Army. I think not having that ability to just have waves upon waves, just bricks of infantry moving out across the board, is going to be a big shame. Now, of course, we may be missing something. Remember, guys, all this information is based off of a leaked codex, of, a, of an earlier version. It very well may be that this information got fed back into GW and they went, you know what, we do need to bring conscripts back. We do need to have more data abilities on these Catachans and these Death Corps and these Cadians. We do need that. But I suspect that when the codex drops, this is kind of what we're, we're going to have. It seems like GW's put a lot of effort into the vehicle side of things. They've not paid as much attention to the infantry side of things this time around. Um, me personally, I know... Not having concerts is going to be a really big blow. Not having dedicated veterans is is sad as well. You can kind of recreate them. At the end of the day, Death Corps units can take three special weapons if you want. So you can kind of have veterans that way. But they've only got ballistic skill 4+, plus, not 3+. Plus. You know, losing the special weapons. Yeah, not many people took special weapons squads. I know, they weren't great. Would have been cool if GW had kept them in and given them a space being eradicator style ability. Where if you're all aim at the same target, you get an extra shot. That would have been cool. No, there's the, I don't see the point in removing units. It's relatively easy to fix them. So, and you know, so just to me, it just, the infantry side of things seems a little disappointing. Overall, with the Codex, I'm super positive about it. Overall, I am glad that for every data sheet they've taken off us, they've at least given us something back. Even if it is cat chance and they don't seem that worth it. It's nice that I think overall, we're going to have a net gain on data sheets. It's just a shame that there's been these missed opportunities and it's a shame that we have still lost some units. But overall, they're my thoughts on the infantry situation in the new Guard Codex. But what do you think? Are you happy that we've now got these different kinds of data sheet to represent the Katachans and the other regiments? Or do you think it was just easier having the one data sheet? Are you going to miss your conscripts or did you never really use them or veterans? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed today's video, please consider giving it a like. And if you never want to miss an episode, then subscribe to the channel. If you've really enjoyed today's video and you want to go the extra mile when it comes to supporting the channel, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It's thanks to the channel members and the Patreons that I'm able to do my YouTube channel full time now and go into extra detail and put extra effort into every single one of my videos. I'm constantly trying to improve the audio and the quality and the visuals of every video that I put out. Also, one of the big perks about being a channel member or Patreon supporter is you gain access to the Mordian Glory Discord. And it's a really active community. We've got over 500 people in there at the moment. And we're constantly talking about everything from tactics to memes to painting. And it's not just to do with the guard. There's Obviously, there's a really big guard community in there, but there's loads of other kind of players in there as well. So if you want to just get involved in a really active and friendly and safe 40k community, then please consider becoming a 
Telegram member or Patreon and getting yourself into that Discord. And I just want to take a moment now to say a big thank you to all of the latest channel members and Patreon support. So a big thank you to Pierre Maxence, Squatticus, Interrogated Chaplin, Joshua Lanigan, Crisis, Tiki Wiki, Panzer Brandy, Nate Sow, Zanst, Ally McGregor, Deadlock Glitch, Josh Kozeki, Ben Dwyer, Tyler Goodyear, Chris Watson, Gaming Guy 64, Blitzkrieg, David Hunt, Runtime, Tommy Knox, Charles K, Rat, Sam, Bahala Wargaming, Pope Boniface, Harry Dickinson, Violetta, Imperial Guardsman, Costas Pap, Benji H Man, Byron, Nephrums, T Kazi, Paul Venables, Michael Angier, Glyn Tolly, Billy Bubat, Dryland, Duncan August, Nick P, Greyman, Larry Stewart, Jasper Vox, Jimmy B, Bumrind, 63, Dramatic Dodo, Clather, Daniel Burke, DL318, The Lion's Den, Colin King, Nemesis Dude, Colby Chavez, Holder Gret, Zach Knoll, Copperhead, Starkey Studio, Omar Rees, Rick James 90, Chaos Nub 44, David Machim, Joseph Galvadon, Ewan Cameron, Farmer Space Boy, Richard Jeffs, Dennis Laser, Cobra, and Agron's Emperor's Issues. Thank you to all of you guys for becoming channel members. Thank you for doing your part. Big thank you to all of the latest Patreon supporters as well. So thank you to James Hughes, Stephen Pache, Matty B, Sean Mulligan, Bon Bon Vert, Chris, Nod Goblin Nico, Zorox, Dustin Patterson, Stephen Lamb, Jason May, Thomas and Texas Red. Thank you guys for your ongoing Patreon support. And last but certainly not least, a big thank you to all of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the War Masters. The people have truly gone above and beyond when it comes to supporting the channel. And I am personally grateful to them so a massive thank you to bon bon vert navy veteran philip french ross miller tequal alex dengal john stubbs nicholas walsh swordfish trombone diesel fox tom sutton and of course august varney thank you guys your support is incredibly generous and it makes a huge huge difference i hope you've all enjoyed today's video Thank you for watching, and of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.